Welcome back, welcome back to my workshop. Um, now, today we are working on this. This is a T5 transporter. And the job in hand today is a lower ball joint. That's what we're doing today. Now this, there are a couple of different styles of T5s. There is the T28, T30 and T32. This is a T32. Difference between the T32, the T30 and the T28 is the way the shock mounts to the hub. So on the T28, the T30, the shock is like a through hub design, kind of like you'd find on a Mark V Golf, um, where the actual hub has a round hole and the shock pushes through it and then there's two bolts that clamp it to it. On the T30, on the T32, like this one, it's kind of like the old fashioned type of attachment you'd find on a Mark II Golf, where there's a, an arm coming off the top of the hub and the shock absorber's got a clamp and it comes on like that and then two bolts go through and mechanically bolt it so it's not pushed into the hub it's physically bolted i've taken a couple of pictures anyway um which i will show which will be on after i've talked before i actually go into the actual work that is need to be done to get this ball joint out right this is what we're going to be fitting today this is our ball joint as you can see it's just a standard ball joint two bolts very similar to what's on a t4 um goes in the bottom of the hub held on with these two lovely little bolts here um yeah simple as so that's what we're going to be doing now i've undone quite a lot of the stuff already so i've actually loosened off for, and removed some of the bolts and now we're going to go into actually pulling this ball joint out so here we go right so first things first this is where the ball joint is located it's held on by two bolts up under here and then this pin comes through the lower arm and that is a taper joint as well so it is locked in solid and then the arm itself is attached to the actual bottom of the bus by these two joints here now um it is as simple as that very few fixings to hold this on but i will say these ball joints tend to get stuck in the bottom of the hub so and they also get stuck in the actual lower arm so our first point of call is i've taken the two bolts off that one there and that one there then what I've got is I made, I have this long pin. You can use a long breaker bar, whatever you want. Just stick it in there on top of the hub, like that. And then we get a nice big hammer. Then we get a nice big hammer. And we drive that out of the hub. Simple as, there you go. Right, so as you can see now, as you can see, the ball joint has now come away, which is here. The only problem you've got is access. The only problem you have once you've done this is access. So trying to get this out and trying to knock this ball joint away is an absolute nightmare. And also I've undone and slackened off these two bolts, which allows the arm to drop. But the problem is the the arm can only drop so far and then it contacts the bottom of the subframe so theoretically it won't go no further the only way to get it lower is to pull the pin out of the back which releases this back joint back here show you a picture the only way to get it out is to undo this joint here pull this bolt out and then as you do it it allows the arm to come away and then the arm will drop right down and give you full access so that's next job and there she is and now because that's out that arm swings right down like that as you can see now that bolt has come out that arm is right down and easily accessible just like that the next one thing you've got to do is to release this ball joint from this taper now this is a bit of a pain because it is a taper joint now two ways of doing this you can either strike the very end of this with a nice two pound club hammer and the shock will let it go and the ball joint will tap out but sometimes even then they don't want to let go now if that ball joint doesn't want to let go you can use this this is a ball joint breaker it goes on the hub like that you beat it on 
and then theoretically as you tighten it up it will pop the bolt and ball joint now I'm going to try giving this couple of strikes seeing if I can pop this just as easy as that right. sometimes like I said though you could swing and swing at them and they won't let go now you can see this one is the reason we're changing this is it's dust seals completely and only blown out of it not got a lot of play but dust seals matter in MOTs so now there you go we are apart our next job is to clean the hole up where it sits now it corrodes really badly so you have to clean them up to allow the ball joint to sit back in the actual bottom of the hub square easiest way to do this is with a circular um, sanding uh, wire bit which is here so this is what I use it's just a circular wire brush that's in the end of my DeWalt dr drill and you literally just it fits almost perfectly into the hole as you can see you just stick it in there pull the trigger cleans it up good as new better to do that than to literally struggle I would say this is one of the best little things you can buy to do in this you can put them in all corroded all I would suggest you do if you do that put it in tighten it up drive it around and then maybe at the end of the week just make sure that the bolts ain't come loose because what happens is where you mount to the corrosion as it drives the, sh the forces kind of bed it in and as it beds in it pushes the rust out of the way and the powder comes out and then the bolts can sometimes work a little bit loose and then they will undo so the best thing to do is just to check them give them a little tweak after about a week if you're not going to do it but my personal opinion is clean the hole first and that's what we're going to do now right so here we are under the van now you can see where this thing fits look at all that yummy in there now like I said I got my wire spinner now when you do this be careful because it has a tendency to kick stick that out in there Woo! that's that kick that's that hole point and then you go to the bottom simple as that that literally minute literally as you just see seconds and look at that she's clean ready to take a ball joint if you weren't there and you were trying to scrape that out you would be there for ages so now what we do now we've cleaned her out the arm's still down we're gonna get our ball joint and in she goes now the good thing about these, the ball joints aren't sided. They fit up into the hub like that. See that? So what we do, put that up in there. And we get our, our bolt. It just so happens I put the camera right where I need to put my arm. Brilliant. Now, the ball joints are very similar between all of the T5s. And pretty much T6s and everything. I'm pretty sure that the T6s, T5s, T... Nearly all the T5s and T6s run the same type of setup on the actual ball joint. Um, and you can already see as I'm putting that in, it's not sitting how I want it to sit. It's sitting off, which means I need a bit more cleaning in my eyes. I pretty much want that to sit flat. So we're gonna go a couple of little seconds. Where is it? Where's that? I reckon it's over here. Right, so we're gonna go over there. Right, so, take two. Let's have a look at that. That's better. Look at that, that fits in there so snugly it stays in place. 
Right, yeah, so bolts going in. Got me my drive key. Where's my little extension? Is it, where is it? Oh, it's over there, look. Let's get it over here. Yeah, I'm here. There you go. Right. Right, okay, so that bomb ball joint's on. Now, we've got to put this armour back in. And there comes the fun game in itself. Now what we've got to do is go up top, pull that hub forwards and stick that, that in so that ball joint goes in here. And we're going to get in a nice angle like that. Probably a bit more. About, try to get that angle right. About that, I would say. And then you can see the angle of the lower arm as it comes up and it makes it easier because this, where this is nice and tight if you get that angle right it will just boop, straight back in nice and easy yeah there she goes in she goes and then get that nut on cup turns boom right next job right next job get our back back pin in which is, where did that go? It's back there, right, okay. All right, so the back pin's up here. Now, as you can see, our holes are well out. And it could be a bit of a pain trying to push it over. So the easiest option, get your spanner, stick it in there. Can you see that? And I can steer it around. And I get my bolt, steer it so it's in the right position and give it a little wiggle and boom, through she goes. Easy as that. If you try to move this with your arms and hands, you'll be there trying to work it around. If you do it that way, it makes your life a lot easier. Um, screw the bolt on. Now, another thing that is very important, this joint here and this joint here are roll joints. Now, you are supposed to tighten these up when the car is sitting with its weight on the suspension because if you tighten these up now and then when you drop the car especially if it's lowered as that arm travels up it will twist that joint inside and it will remain twisted and before you know it it will split and tear so what you have to do is you have to tighten these up when your suspension has got the weight of the van on it easy way to do it is me it's easy because i've got a pit i just let it down put it on the ground drive forwards and back a little bit and then i just tighten the bolts up obviously you can't do that so the easiest way for you to do it in my personal opinion is put the jack under the hub is to put the jack under this part of the hub jack the car up until the actual van starts to lift off of the axle stand and then when it's up tighten the bolt because then it's under load and that's your easiest option that's what i would suggest doing okay now what i'm going to do now i'm going to tighten up this puppy hey, where's the oh, there we go get me gun put it on the spin the right way Perfect. Perfect. And then, what's that one? What we get is we get, we need, see this is the most annoying thing, is because they're not, they're not like vag parts, the bolts are different because they're patterns. So the original one was 21, this one's a 22. And we don't want to put the old one on because that's a nine lock and it literally come off so easy so we're just gonna undo it and let it fall off again so now we're gonna screw it back on there you go flick the thing away and then 60 newton meters 90 degree 90 newton meters 
45 degree. Now be aware that these are not torque settings that have come from Volkswagen. These are ones that I've managed to get from multiple sources. So I expect I I take no responsibility for these torque settings I'm giving out. They're just for help in a worst case scenario. I'm pretty sure they're right, but I take no responsibility from not being right. So let's load them. Oh yeah. Huh? It's gone off. Just. And I'm going to take that back a little bit. That's it. Take it forwards again. First talk complete. That's this one's. That's that one. There we go. That's it. That's it. Right, so that's the talks done. And then they are stretched after this. So the bottom one, that one goes first, and a 90 degree turn. That's on undo. So I'm gonna go round and pull. that one and next that was the 90 degree and next we have our 245 so, so get that in there first come on and they are tight so do you even need a torque wrench just do them up nice and tight personally but it's always good to get them loaded properly. That's it. Them two loaded, bottom ball joints are in. Woo! Right, so. <sighs> Next. Get a wheel back on. Get it back on the floor. And then once she's back on the floor, roll it back and forwards a little bit. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna do up the main lower arms. Simple as. Let's get our wheel on. Right, so we now got it on the floor and the suspension, and you can see the angle that this lower arm's now moved to. So theoretically, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna talk this up. Now, these two joints here, they are fitted with yield bolts, so they stretch 110 newton meters on both, and then a 120 degree turn. But theoretically, you could probably reuse them, like I'm gonna reuse these ones, you get away with maybe once, um, maybe twice, you don't really wanna push it past that, and then you wanna get some new bolts. Um, and you can probably, they are so tight, you can probably just manhandle them up. So let's go for it, you'll see what I mean. So, first things first, spanner on front. And then, with that up in there. So, here we go. 
So that's the that's that. Then we get our pen and we mark the head of the nut, the head of the bolt. And that way, we're going to draw a line straight down through it. So, and then same on that one. And we can tell our degree of turn because you're not going to be able to get like the full angle. I'm not going to be able to get the full angle on this. Yeah, about 90 degrees. One more, I can do it. That's how tight it is. That's how tight it is. Yeah. That's tight. What's that? At? So that's about it. Can come off of there. One of there. That's that one. Tatted and tight. Simple as, there you go, nice and tight. Job done. So there you go, that's how we fit a ball joint. Um, lower ball joint to a T5 transporter. Hope that's been helpful, if it has, please like and subscribe and um, watch me other videos, all right?